These are the notes for LT5 within the electromagnetism unit. And the target says that you can communicate the pros and cons of alternating current compared to direct current. Okay, so AC versus DC. And if you've not watched the video yet that we watch in class, remember this. This was almost a Tesla, Nikola Tesla versus Thomas Edison battle. And remember that Tesla came up with this idea of alternating current. Well, Edison would have benefited from a world of only direct current. All right, so it's important to keep these two players in this uh, kind of this electricity battle game clear who, who's on which team. What we're going to start out with is defining both alternating and direct. All right, so we'll start with alternating current for no real reason. So alternating current is our AC. And this is where electrons flow in one direction. They stop and then immediately reverse direction. This is a continuous process, so it's not like they do it once. All right, this is almost like non-stop. Think of them as vibrating in place. All right, now there has to be something that makes them do that, and we'll talk about this over here in a minute. Okay, but for an alternating current, they go back and forth. And this is what Tesla figured out was very beneficial to long distance power transmission. All right, so that was him. And down here, we're going to talk about Edison's direct current. Okay, so this was the first one that was invented. And if it's direct current, the electrons flow in one continuous direction. So there's no back and forth here. Okay, they flow in one continuous direction. Now it's not like this is a bad idea. It's just that each of these has a purpose of when it would be most useful. All right, so AC, back and forth, direct, one continuous flow. All right, so let's go back here and talk about when this would be a beneficial sort. If you think back to the video, if you've watched it, remember at one point Tesla was kind of at a low point in life and he was out digging dishes and he looked overhead and he saw just these power lines everywhere, nothing like we have, where you know, you've got the lines maybe a parallel along each side of the road, but they were crisscross all over and it just looked like a mess with his uh, kind of his OCD tendencies. And so he thought there's got to be a better way. So what I'm drawing here, which won't be clear, this is a power station. And right? you're used to my drawings by now, so it's not going to be pretty. But what happens at a power station? is you'll obviously have the lines that originate there. And I'm going to draw a power line kind of ridiculously large just so we can get some stuff inside of it here. But if you've got a power line, and this is one of them, well, obviously there's wires in there. And wires, has the, wires have those free electrons. So you've got these electrons that will be fairly tightly packed in there because it's a metal. And the power station itself will have two switches. One will be have a positive charge, one will have a negative charge. So one will be positive, one will be negative. Now think about electrons, they have a negative charge. So when the switch is flicked to positive, each of these electrons starts to come back towards the power station. Now we just said that they never, they don't go one continuous direction in alternating current but they'll start to come towards this oppositely charged positive because they have a negative charge. But just as quick as they think they're headed that way, the station will flick the positive switch off and they'll flick it to a negative. Well, they're negative. They aren't going to like that. So they start to head the other direction. And that's what happens very, very frequently. All right. When I say frequently, like it happens continuous, but there's a frequency. When you talk about a frequency, it's how often something happens. And the power station will have this happen. The switch will flick 60 times per second in the United States. 
In some other countries, they'll run their alternating current between 50 and 60. In the United States, that thing flicks, that switch, 60 times per second. So clearly this isn't a person doing it. It's a machine, right? We don't have the capability to flick a switch 60 times in one second. So you'll see it referred to as a frequency of 60 hertz. HZ is the unit for frequency. We deal with this more next unit. But just 60 hertz is going to be the frequency of alternating current within the United States. So what would be the benefit of that? Why would we want to do that? The first benefit is there's no electron drift. These guys don't actually travel anywhere. They just go back and forth in place. It's almost like running in place, almost. All right, just kind of left and right, but they don't, they don't travel. And that means less friction. And we know friction creates thermal energy, which makes it more efficient. We're able to have more electrical potential energy instead of thermal energy, which we don't want in power lines. Okay, so if they're not moving all the way through, we don't get the drift, therefore they're, they're more efficient. So the main use of alternating current is for transmission of electrical PE. Remember, electrical potential energy, whatever. We aren't using it for anything yet, so whatever you're going to use it for, maybe at your house, over long distances. Okay, so that's the main reason that alternating current is such a good deal. Now, <clears throat> this isn't always maybe necessary, because think about it. If you've got, let's say your cell phone, you need electrical potential energy to move from the battery, let's say, to different parts of your cell phone, but it's a really short distance. It's not like, you know, the power station out on Shepherd Road having to get to the school. We're talking a little tiny device. So there's times that this alternating current's not a bad idea. Think about the simulations we've done. If you've got a battery and you've got some wires, okay, well, we'll just put one light bulb in to keep it simple. So here's a little light bulb. And we don't even need a switch. It doesn't matter. If you have a positive and negative terminal on a battery, Electrons, since they're negative, tend to travel away from the negative terminal. Okay, so they would go through the battery, or not the battery, the bulb, through the filament, and keep right on moving along. Okay, it's simple, and sure, this electron here, it is going to feed through the entire circuit, but it's such a short distance, there's not going to be that much friction, there's not going to be that much wasted energy. But imagine if you had to have a switch installed inside of a cell phone that flicked 60 times per second. That just seems like overkill because the amount of thermal energy due to friction you're going to create in here is pretty small. Okay, it's, it, it's just not necessary. So direct current is good for super short and simple situations. Okay, so think like little gadgets. Think inside of your house when they're short distances. Okay, so household uses. But once you get outside of your house and you're trying to get electricity to it, you've got to switch to the alternating current. Otherwise, too much electrical energy is going to be converted to thermal energy due to friction, and it's just going to be ineffic inefficient as heck. We're going to lose a lot of money. All right, so let's think about this. In this case, electrons do move. Now, what you'll find maybe a little counterintuitive is that the electrical signal so think about when you flick on a light switch the lights turn on immediately okay you flick on turn on a switch to turn on your radio I don't know okay power on your cell phone the signal actually travels really close to the speed of light okay really close but these electrons, this electron here, let's name him Fred. Fred here, he's not going to go at the speed of light around that circuit. He's going to go slow and steady. In fact, what we call that electron drift, that movement, if you followed Fred, it's pretty slow. It's only one centimeter per second. All right, so 
you know, if, if we did do this type in power lines, it'd be like, gosh, you know, it's not that fast. It doesn't seem like it would create that much friction for that much of an electrical energy loss. But it's because of that large distance that this just isn't feasible. As you may remember from the video, if, if we truly did use direct current for everything, so we use it in power lines, remember how much thicker those power lines would have to be. I don't, I don't remember the ratio, but probably 10, 15 times as thick. And so now imagine in Michigan, every time we got an ice storm, holy moly, they, they'd come tumbling. Okay, so um, in, in the perfect world, Tesla and Edison would have gotten along. Nobody would have had UGGOs, and they would have worked together to figure out, you know what, there's great uses for alternating current, and there's great uses for direct current. All right, so there's, it just depends on the situation. Each one has its advantage. Each one has its dis disadvantage. All right, that is it. Good luck.